The Ionic Framework has its own website. And because it's still in beta, the address is beta.ionicframework.com forward slash docs. If you left the beta out, it would take you to the documentation for version 3 and 2. Version 1 no longer is used, but you could go legacy if you wanted. But let's stick with everybody doing the same thing, and we'll go beta.ionicframework.com.docs. Now you'll see it's laid out nicely. We've got an introduction that tells you what is about Ionic, uh, Ionic what it is. As I've told you, it's an, a UI, a GUI framework for building on top of JS uh, to make sure that we get functionality out of the box. The installation is here and it's very straightforward and there are prerequisites. Now what you have to do is there's one absolute prerequisite and there are some things that I do because I think they use better tools and give you a better experience. So let's get the tools in first strangely and the first one I install always is Git. Now Git has a command line, uh, you understand what Git is, it's a repository management system where it means that you can put uh, builds of applications up in a cloud storage facility and you can call them uh, and use version control for that. We won't be using that at all but what it does give you when you install this is a really good terminal command. Now what's a terminal? Terminal is a command line. Now installed with um, Windows by default there is a thing called command line and there's the command prompt and it's perfectly all right it's okay it's okay and it does its job but there is a better one that you can get from git also you can use powershell which powershell is is really powerful but i think it's actually over the top powershell windows powershell i use it a lot for some things but this is too much you don't need it for this it's for running batch files on your own system but you don't need it for this. So what you need to go is go to this address here and you need to download the latest version of Git, install it for Windows and by default you get the command line. So once you've installed it, and I won't install it again obviously because I've already got it, is you go to there and if you go to your programs, Git, you'll see Git bash. Now I use it so much that I've actually got it installed as a shortcut on my taskbar. See down here, git bash? And in order to run it, right click, right click the words git bash and run ad as administrator. That gives you power to do things inside your system that you wouldn't be able to do if you didn't enable the administrator control. So control and scroll in and you can see I can change the, the thing very easily. And that's what I'll do in a minute once we've got some of the other tools installed. So that's Git Bash installed um, and Git is integrated into the other software that we're going to install. But let's do that one next. The next thing you're going to install is a thing called Visual Studio Code. Now you may have already installed it for other units, but I think you should refresh your install and get it as the most up to date. It's good at nagging you to update it, um, but you should make sure that you've got the latest version because there are some issues when new things come out, especially like the Ionic 4, you want to have the latest tools to work with it. Other text editors do exist. There's Atom and so forth, Sublime, and you can use Notepad++, but this is the best tool by far. And I think it's the best tool because it is so easily extended with themes and so forth. And you'll see here's an Ionic project inside Visual Studio Code. And I'll show you how to open that up. Um, and you can see that um, there are all of the folders here. You've got some nice colours. And these are all managed through the installation of what are called extensions. And the extensions, the packages that I use, are here. And they give me this color thinging, they give me the icons, they give me all sorts of things that I think are very useful and make the experience really much better than, than it might be with Sublime and so forth and Atom and certainly with Notepad++. Nothing wrong with them, they're quite competent, but Visual Studio Code is better by far than many and acknowledged by 
lots of people who are non-Microsoft fans that it is one of the best editors you can install. So there it is. I'm going to put the links to all of these in the description of this video. But you can see that this is an easy install. You pick your uh, install. I would suggest that you do the user install 64-bit or 32-bit and that will give you that. Then the next tool is the only tool which is absolutely essential for the installation of the things that Ionic is going to need. And that's the Node Framework. So that's what we're going to install next. The Node Framework is very easy to install. This is a Windows installer link. Use the latest, this is called Long Term Support, LTS. Don't use the current because it can have breaking changes for things that may be updated in Ionic versus Node versus all sorts of things. But the Long Term Support, people develop to that. And then as the new features come out in the current versions, they will become the long-term support version. But 8.1, I think, is the, is the minimum standard for Ionic 4. This is going to work really well for you. And the number may have changed by the time you watch this video. Because you can see I'm recording in August 2018. By the time we actually get to these videos, it's going to be a bit later in the year as the units have started to be developed. So that's what you need to do. Download this, it's a standard Windows installer, run the installation and you will then have the node tools that you need in order to use Ionic. So let's just test the installation once it's been done. So I'm going to assume we've done all the installations, Git, Visual Studio Code and finally the node version, whatever is the current on the long term support that you have found when you've gone to the nodejs.org. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to test whether our installation has been successful. So in order to do that we need a command prompt, a terminal. So I'm going to use my git, right click, run as administrator so that we get full access to the uh, control systems. And I'm going to just expand that up so that you can read it and maybe make it a wee bit bigger that way. And it's really easy to do. So you type in the command line node-v. And that will give us the version that's installed. 8.111, as I say, fine for our Ionic. And then we'll do npm-v. And that should come back with, I think it's, yes, yeah, 6.3. So that's really good. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to install Ionic. And that's really easy to do. And we use the Node Package Manager, npm, to do that. So we type npm install dash g for global so that it's available throughout the computer ionic now i'm not going to do it obviously so that's going to give us a full version of ionic what you can also do is you can add the command at latest now i'm happy to run this command and what it will do is it will update my installation if it needs any but i know it doesn't need any any installation updates so i won't even bother to run it so as a bare minimum, you would run dash G Ionic. And then if you want to update your Ionic framework at latest. Visual Studio Code is really good at informing you when something needs an update, as I say. Um, so you may well get that. And what you should do is drop out into the administrator command prompt and do this to run the at latest. So that will give you that. I won't do this and you can just install. This will take some time. There's a lot for it to do in order to, to work on everything that the Ionic framework needs. So once you've done that, what we'll do is we'll go to the next video and the next video will be where we create a first app. Now the first app will be terribly simple just to test that we've got everything we need in place to go forward as we need to do, as we need to develop for our assignment. So this should make you feel really geek working in the command line. It's, it's very powerful and you'll find out that it's very, very useful too. So I'll see you in the next video.